The devourers of worlds, the devourers of bone, the devourers of fungus, the devourers of alligators, the devour- okay, we get it. Forget tanks, we're talking about isopods. They're creepy, lovable, they like corn chips, and they eat fish and people. Okay, not the people part. Actually, they do, but... Today I'm going to answer all your questions about isopods. What are isopods? How are isopods? What's the deal with corn chips? And if me and my isopod friend got stuck in a boat Essex style, should I donate my body for him to eat or vice versa? All these questions are going to be answered today in some way or another. And some of these questions will be very easy to answer and other ones will be very difficult to answer. I think the Gary friend eating situation is a more ethical question that I'm not going to get into. But something I can get into, how pill bugs have fallen off meme culture. I mean, when's the last time you've heard of Isopod Hour? Not in a while. So to represent such a dead meme, I got another dead meme. Crab game, they're both also crustaceans, so it works on multiple levels. To truly understand such a mysterious, not insect related thing, we must go back to the past, baby. To the Erda group of isopods coming from the Jurassic Age. Now I should clarify, I love all animals, but these monstrosities were believed to share resemblances with the parasitic variety of isopods. The mouth parts, after some recent imagery, show that they had experience with piercing and sucking. I'm not saying experience lightly. That was what it said in the research paper that I read. If that's not enough, their thorax legs are shaped like hooks. These hooks were used to latch onto their host and still remain in many isopods to this day. Funnily enough, it's believed that parasitism is rooted from opportunistic predators. Parasites came from opportunistic predators. So, for you to truly understand what a parasite is, a mosquito is an opportunistic predator. So if you think mosquitoes are a bane to society, imagine an isopod permanently latched to your tongue and then reproducing in your mouth. We'll get into that. Speaking of which, let's delve into the parasitic variety of isopods. Much how like Minecraft YouTubers start as opportunistic predators and then devolve into becoming parasitic crab game content creators. We're talking about parasites, baby. There are about 95 known families of isopods, and of them, there are a few families of parasitic isopods. Namely, Bopyridae, Cryptoniscidae, Cymothoidae, Thagidae, <laughs> Entoniscidae, Nathidae, and Tridentelidae. I wrote to myself, have fun saying these, and I can assure you I did not. Most of these families are in the suborder of Cymothoida. These parasites infect everything from sponges to crabs to prawns to krill. Most marine, and even some freshwater organisms, aren't safe from at least one crustaceous parasite that looks like a xenomorph from Alien. These isopods are both physically and species-wise large. There are 380 species in the Cymothoidae family alone. Also size-wise, they are up to 50 millimeters or 2 inches in length, which doesn't sound large until you realize that it is four times the size of a regular pill bug. The, family, uh, the females are significantly larger than the males. This subfamily can live anywhere from a fish's tongue or the buccal cavity to your circulatory system and some crabs and even looks like a cute knapsack that is also sucking the blood out of your... Now that I've discussed how many parasites there are, let's go over one of the most iconic isopods. One of the ones that people are most terrified of 
and the one that appears in a bunch of people's tuna and then people try suing companies even though they're perfectly fine to consume and it's basically like you're getting a free shrimp with your tuna. The tongue-eating louse. So, if I haven't terrified you already, we're looking at the life cycle of a tongue-eating louse. These species are able to fully devour the tongue of a fish. They are protandrous hermaphroditic species, they, which means they start as male and they will over time transition to a female. At the beginning of their life cycle, they swim into the gills of a fish and start to feed on them. This is where their hook sized pleopods and their little experience sucking and piercing is able to feed, 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 and feed on this fish. I am unsure of if the fish are even aware they're in them right now, but it's basically like um, Metal Gear Solid, except there's nothing stopping them. They just keep eating, and eventually they get so big they develop and transition into a female. This may be why the sexual dimorphism is so crazy for a lot of these species, because the females are actually a later stage of the males. The males become females almost all of the time. And these females will detach and swim through the fish into their buccal cavity, or tongue. They use their hooks on their legs to latch onto the tongue, and they pierce into that fish's tongue. And now they are doing a keg stand in the fish's mouth. They will consume the blood of the tongue until there is none left. This leads to the fish's tongue wielding, becoming necrotic, and poof, it's gone. The parasite will continue to eat the mucus and blood from the mouth of the fish. But the fish is using the parasite as what people call a pseudo-tongue. This means that they can still digest things, but they're using the isopod as a tongue instead of the tongue that the parasite ate. This leads to many questioning the relationship between them, but if I cut your arm off and then offer to lift things for you, I wouldn't exactly call myself being a helping friend. So that's where my stance on that argument is. This is why um, a lot of these fish tend to survive even through, and sometimes even thrive. Keep in mind, with these pseudo-tongues, I still don't know if it's an enhancement or not. It could be like a cybernetic arm kind of thing, where this tongue can like reach even further for you. You can eat even more krill. I don't know anyone who's done any studies on it, but I'd be interested. But while this is all happening in the mouth, male isopods are still chilling out eating in the fish's gills. Now, if you haven't left the video already, we're moving on to reproduction, which is about to get a lot, lot worse. Eventually, we move on to reproduction. The males climb up the gills and find the female fish. There, the fish finally gets to escape as the isopods all leave the fish's mouth, retire, and live a happy life. Oh, you thought I was being serious. No, they reproduce in the mouth of the fish. How do they do that, you ask? They have sex. In case you're unsure if this is a family-friendly channel, the males have two pair, two penises. These penis pairs are called peenies. This pleopod, this is the leg of an isopod, uh, gives the semen to a female's gonopore, where it is stored in the oviduct. The oviduct um, forms the babies, um, and they are basically kept in a marsupium pouch. They are stored in what's the equivalent of a stasis chamber from Legend of Zelda where they evolve from the little tiny little plankton that they are basically into tiny little isopods. From there, a swarm of male isopods will burst out and continue the cycle. I should remind you that they are um, doing this all in the fish's mouth still. This is still in the fish's mouth. But we're done with them. We're done. They'll die. The fish will be caught, and some random fisherman's gonna open the fish's mouth, and the isopod's gonna crawl out, and someone's gonna kill it. We can move on. Giant isopods are a testament to how freaking weird the deep sea is. 
They survive in the deep sea, and because of this, they have a huge case of abyssal gigantism. The huge was a pun. It was a pun. Similar to island gigantism, but it's in the deep sea. Explanations for abyssal gigantism aren't for certain, so please don't ask me about it. They eat both dead and alive things. A lot of people tend to mistake giant isopods for scavengers, but if you've seen a video of a giant isopod killing a shark, that is very wrong to believe. They will predate if needed and will feed on any type of carcass that falls there. Most of the time, fallen whales go down there and they go into what are called feeding frenzies. They mob food and basically gut themselves. You can see these online um, with crabs and eels and all the things that live in the pressurized ocean, all fighting amongst each other in a brutal food fight. The reproduction is similar to as noted, you know, the whole peenies thing. Beauty is in the eye of the peenies. And there's little evolution between the different giant isopod species. They remain fairly similar amongst the world, mostly found in the Pacific. The giant isopods have also been found eating plastic in the Pacific Ocean. So know that some plastic that gets dumped in the ocean goes all the way to the bottom where some giant isopod never pukes it up. So now you know. Giant isopods, like pill bugs, have compound eyes and similar reproduction and will roll into an almost ball. But it's not conglobation, which we'll get into also later. Now, if you ever wondered... Hey, haven't I seen a picture of a giant isopod with glowing eyes? You are correct. There is tapetum in the back of their eyes, which makes them appear to glow. This is the same thing that happens in cats. Isopods, due to the scarcity of food, are constantly semi-hibernating, and they reproduce similarly as noted. I already said that. Giant isopods have been recorded eating sharks, alligators, whales, etc. And people have also been dropping in alligators into there to watch them eat. They have the largest eggs of invertebrate species in the ocean, and they do bite. This one is a lot more calm than the other one. All right, we're moving on to wood lice. All right, this one, similar to the others, is a bit of a cheat, but we're talking about wood lice. This is once again a suborder, the suborder of Oniscida. I didn't look up how to pronounce that one before. Cuberus, Armadillium, Porcelio are all three genera that are famous. You'll have to trust me on that one. If you want to talk about pill bugs, you'll have to specify the sow bug. If you can't tell, a lot of the names for a pill bug are generally less specific than you think they are. Sow bugs comprise the genera of Porcelio and Aniscus. As for the name potato bug, once again you have to be more specific, as potato beetles, crickets, and isopods all have claimed to the name. Keep in mind, potato beetles and crickets are super distantly related to isopods. It's the equivalent of saying a human is basically the same thing as a fish, which Biggie Cheese can disagree with. Doodle bug can be a pill bug, but it can also be an ant lion, so be careful with how you word it. Roly poly is like the only one that is specific to pill bugs. All this summarized is that nicknames of insects are confusing because taxonomy is confusing. If you want to talk about the quintessential pill bug, Armadillium vulgare, or roly polies are the only two that pertain to the classic pill bug. But let's first talk about how pill bugs are, technically speaking, an invasive species. I don't mean invasive in the same way that a parasite is invasive. I mean they're invasive all over the place, but notably in the Americas. So what happened is, they snuck onto the ballast of ships, traveling to the Americas, and colonized as much as the colonizers that were riding those ships. They're almost everywhere now. Any forest you can go to, you can see a pill bug. Open a rock, there's a pill bug. Go in your basement, there's probably a swarm of pill bugs. 
So, the ballast of ships were what kept them afloat many times, and they were made of stones and timber, which often had microfauna in them. This is how worms became invasive, but unlike worms, isopods of pill bugs specifically have not been found to be really detrimental to the environment. In fact, if we go later, they are really good for the environment in some cases. Because of the fact that they are water on the inside with gills that have conquered the land, they're sort of like inverted moose. Speaking of moose, let's talk about giant cases of eating feces. Isopods have been known to eat poop, fungus, and each other. Another fun fact is that they have a series of tubing in the back called uropods. This is the same thing that is a lobster tail. But these ones allow pill bugs to drink with their anus. They have hemocyanin pigments in their blood, which means that they have copper ions in oxygenated blood. This turns their blood blue like a bunch of crustaceans. Speaking of gluttons, they can eat zinc, lead, arsenic, carbon, and pretty much anything. I've meant over this. They are humidity absorbers, and they're actively preventing climate change. Okay, that fact's probably a little more interesting than the other ones. How are they preventing climate change, you may say? Well, cord-producing Basidiomycetes fungus are kind of dangerous in this whole global warming world. These cords produce enzymes which aid in decomposition, but they also produce carbon dioxide. This carbon dioxide releases influx, and many people are worried due to the fact that woodland soils already release up to 60 trillion kilograms of carbon per year. However, are these fungi a major threat or a boogeyman of carbon influx? These fungi are known for growing out of control, taking control of micro-ecosystems. Things like pill bugs and springtails and other macrofauna suppress these cord-producing fungi and in turn increase the biodiversity of their own soil. By eating tons of this fungi, they can dampen the effects of climate change. They also taste like dirty shrimp, in case you want to try and eat them. Once again, I'm not endorsing it, please don't eat them, but pill bugs taste like dirty shrimp, I'm told. So strangely enough, the first two species I covered, which were the shark predating giant isopods and the tongue eating louse, I was gonna make a name for it, but it eats tongues, I've covered, have had a much longer statement on meme culture than roly polies. There's like the occasional meme, however, the most common thing to encounter if you look up roly poly memes are the fun fact Instagram accounts that say, wow, did you know that an in that pill bugs are a crustacean and not an insect? This is such useful information. And nothing about our taxonomy is confusing. I don't know why I'm really anti-taxonomy today. But they are really obnoxious and very, very, what's the word? Pretentious. I say this while I'm making a 20 minute video of isopods and criticizing them. I don't care. Heck them. Heck Instagram. Who uses Instagram? In fact, if you use Instagram, I can certify that you probably encountered this and you probably liked one of these posts. You heathen. Anyway, if you will let me, I'm going to be a bit of a meme critic now. The tongue-eating louses memes target the absurdity of such a parasite. And just like any meme, there's also My Little Pony ones. My Little Pony, My Little Pony. A lot of them are similar to the KFC and a rat meme that circulated a while ago, where people have found them in their tuna and want to do lawsuits. I've already touched on this. But they think that tongue-eating louse are dangerous, when in fact they're not. And, as I said before, you're getting essentially a coupon for a free shrimp with your fish. So eat it, you frickin' coward. The giant isopods are, however, the most interesting of the three in meme culture. And have the longest withstanding presence in meme culture. They've become the mascot of isopods as a just 
order of species in general. So, knowyourmeme.com, which as we all know is a very reliable source, says that the oldest reference of giant isopods was uploaded in 2007. People's initial horrors of giant isopods were the videos of their feeding frenzies, many of which have millions of views. Their most popular memes involve corn chips and a monocled peanut man. I'm avoiding brands for this exact reason. And people also act as though giant isopods are a threat to your love life. There's many memes along those lines. And to be honest, those ones have more merit than the rest of them, because as I said, be afraid of the peenies. Other things have included an album of giant isopod-related songs uploaded on MySpace. Isopod Hours was officially added to the Urban Dictionary, along with a lot of videos about Isopod Hour. Which I'm pretty sure originally was them spending an hour with a giant isopod before they killed and ate it. Don't quote me on that one, though. Uh, GIFs were sent on Reddit of tongue-eating louse and giant isopods, but the giant isopods were more notable. And finally, 4chan, to no one's surprise, tried turning isopods into a hate crime. It failed because the isopod power is too strong, and peenies are too strong to be hindered by 4chan people. You make me sick! How could you do this to isopods? They're the greatest living thing! Okay. I lied. My motivation for this video wasn't to spread isopod fun facts. In fact, quite the opposite. You see, while I was playing, crab game, the deadest game, I asked people if they wanted to hear fun facts through the wrong microphone. I asked through the wrong microphone and everything I said sounded like I came from an airplane terminal. But that doesn't change the fact that people would rather <laughs> than listen to isopod facts. Alright, come down here, come down here. No, you can come up no, no, here! I'm gonna jump off, I'm gonna jump off, okay? But I need to tell no. you the isopod fact first, okay? Okay, what, what, what's the, uh, the, 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 the isopod fact? So the isopod fact is that, um, isopods I'm will sorry, but this is getting boring. lots of their own feces because they lose copper. What happened? That's not true. They don't urinate. And I feel it's important for me to release all this information for you, so you don't have to be bored by isopods. They're an important part of our ecosystems. So, the more you know. Bye. It's left and right! Can I interest you on some right. bug facts on this trying time? I'm saying left and right as in the new pieces, bro! Are we friends? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're friends. In fact, you're such a friend that I can give you this amazing oh, I'm ready. fact. <laughs> Did you know? <laughs> Did you know that bugs are actually real? crustaceans? Which means they're closely... Yeah, they're closer related <laughs> to crabs than they are to actual, you know, like other bugs. Why are they gonna call crabs crab bugs? Bug buddies. Oh, I've gone. That's. Hi, 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 hey, 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 that's not cool. Yo, I'm here. Peace. Right. A peace, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna, we're gonna make a bond. Yeah, we're gonna have a bond for life. I can start with an yeah. isopod fact. Do you want one? Okay, did you know that it's isopods you again. have copper in their bloodstreams that makes oxygenated blood blue Not instead of red? Who said it's you again? Your blood yeah, is always red! Who said that? No matter what, it's always red. Isopod... Isopod blood yeah. is blue because of the copper. Like human blood is red. It's always. It's, ah! it's hemocyanin. Some oh, who just attacked? Big sick daddy. Oh, oh, it's spray. That's who. That's who was saying that. I want ten dollars, bro. I ain't gonna lie. 
Yo, he's lying, by the way. Fact check no, I'm fact. saying humans always have red blood. I'm not lying. Yeah, I'm, but I'm talking about, about humans. Oh, oh. 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 Oh.